Welcome back. By now, we all know about Fifty Shades of Grey. While some of the initial hubbub has died down, the book and its two sequels are now the fastest selling paperbacks ever. The book has in fact launched its own cottage industry. And it's been great for business where they make the paper for the book. As we see in this story that Harry Smith says is more like Fifty Shades of Maine. So the big question is, have you read it? <laughs> you said you weren't going to ask me that question. I was lying. Yeah, okay. Well, no, I have not read it. Uh, my wife's read it, though. Yeah. She, she found it interesting, yeah. It's easy to laugh now, but there hasn't been much levity in East Millinocket, Maine, in recent years. Once known as the town that paper made, its big mill closed a year and a half ago, and many folks here figured it would never reopen. What was the mood around town during this layoff? Sullen. David Jamo, Selena Van Ness, and Robert Farrington all worked at the mill for decades before it closed. It's a small area. There's no jobs here. I mean... Yeah. There's a lot of jobs linked to the mill, like truck drivers right. and all those guys that cut wood and stuff. They were all idle, too, so it hurt the whole, hurt the whole area. It's probably, probably affected five or six hundred jobs more than just, just the guys in the mill. Absolutely. But just as hope had faded and the freezing weather began to sting last October, a company called Kate Street Capital reopened the mill and rehired more than 200 people, including David, Selena, and Rob. Selena, a widow, was ecstatic. I'll do anything you want me to do. I will help, help whoever, you know, do whatever. Just get that place running and keep it running. Because like I said, it, it was hard. It was really, really hard. I cried a lot, a really lot. Without a job, it's not good. <laughs> Richard Sear is president and CEO of Great Northern Paper. What was it like when you were here and people were coming back in the door again to go to work? There's a lot of relief on the part of the, the people that live here and the people coming back to work. Relief and a sense of purpose. I know it's sometimes it's hard for people to understand that are working in other types of industries, but the people that work here actually love it. It's part of their culture and their family and their history, and they're very passionate about it. And as can only happen in real life, the passion of the paper workers came along just in time to fill the passionate needs of a certain publisher. One of Great Northern's biggest customers is Random House, which publishes Fifty Shades of Grey and its sequels, the steamy hot sex novels that readers around the world can't get enough of. A few months after the mill reopened, the first book soared to the top of the bestseller list. Random House needed paper, a lot of paper. How is Fifty Shades of Grey help ratchet up what you're trying to accomplish here? Because of the success of the book and it's uh, the amount of volume it represented out there, which was unusual for, for a book. Uh, it, it just allowed us to have that much extra momentum, that much extra business. While Fifty Shades of Grey has quickened the pulse of many a soccer mom, it's also breathing new life into East Millinocket. And a word for any would-be readers, buy the real book. No e-reading or downloads, please. <laughs> Gotta be a paper copy. <laughs> <laughs> David, you know anybody who's read the book? Actually, my wife has read uh, I believe she's starting the third. She's already on the third. Yes. Yeah, I have not read them myself, but she has read me bits and pieces till I <laughs> blushed to the point where I made her stop. <laughs> please stop. <laughs> <laughs> but Rob Farrington says there is no shame in what they produce. Maybe there's even a little pride. The wife is going to get her a copy probably next week. I, I feel like uh, I, I'm, I'm not as big a pornographer as Larry Flint, but if we, we can make them, she can read them. <laughs> <laughs> well, smut pedal is now, and it works for me. <laughs> it almost seems like it's your civic duty. Yes, yes. Right. Don't, don't bite the hand that feeds. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, as a group, want to encourage America to buy as many copies of this book as humanly possible? Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. all, three, <laughs> yeah. all three volumes. <laughs> There's nothing like the feel of a book in your hands. <laughs> and David has a suggestion when it comes to casting the movie. <laughs> Mark Scally is a town selectman for East Millinocket. What does it mean to East Millinocket that this paper mill is open again? It's a one-horse town. Without it, we were really looking at the tumbleweeds going down Main Street. And now, all of a sudden, the cars again. That's what it means.
He'd prefer they still be known as the town paper maid, not mommy porn. What we want the industry to know is that we still put out a quality product again. And who knows, maybe we can land the Bible next time, so. <laughs> That's fantastic. First of all, Harry Smith, I have been to East Millinocket. Those are good, hard-working, modest people up there. You went around asking everybody if they were reading a dirty book. So, Harry Smith. Yes. You're, you brought a copy. The question to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Have you read either one, two, or three, or all three? I felt like it was my journalistic responsibility oh, to try to read the book. Uh-huh. I kept falling asleep. Wow. That's a whole different show. Yeah. That's a whole Dr. <laughs> Phil, which is on in a different day part. But I'm, on good authority from the folks at the mill, they say, go to page 120, and that's when it gets interesting. Uh, I, I'm just going to, I'm not, uh, this, the, this does you not. You need to have your own I, This doesn't imply I'm going to read it. I'm just accepting a gift from Harry Smith, just back from East Millinocket, Maine. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. Coming up next, something new.